perhaps the most startling of the recent discoveries in Egypt has been made at Nabta Playa. The Nabta Playa stone circle lies in the middle of a particularly harsh and foreboding part of the Sahara Desert. Although it had been thoroughly catalogued and meticulously measured, it would be many years later before the complex astrophysical function of this mysterious site would be discovered. Astrophysicist Thomas Brophy discusses this revolutionary discovery in his book, The Origin Map, discovery of a prehistoric megalithic astrophysical map and sculpture of the universe. It's becoming clear in the new sub-science or sub-discipline of archaeoastronomy that sophisticated astronomical knowledge existed in very, very ancient times, beginning with a book called Hamlet's Mill, published in 1968 by MIT historians of science, Giorgio de Santillana and Hertha von Deckand. It was found that extremely sophisticated astronomy was coded into the mythologies and legends of very ancient peoples. Perhaps most significant is that the ancients recognized and employed what is called the procession of the equinoxes in their myths, in their legends, and in their constructions. In the hands of Thomas Brophy, a physicist and archaeoastronomer, we see that Nabta Playa is not just oriented to the solstices, which would already tell us that there was a fairly sophisticated astronomy in place, but rather that it encodes astronomical information so sophisticated that it's only in the past couple of decades that our own astronomy has been able to provide us with this kind of information. These crude stones, some of them in the form of a circle, and others in outlying megaliths, other stones buried in the silts, still other pieces of carved bedrock, in Brophy's analysis become a kind of living planetarium, a stone observatory in which these ancient Egyptians could keep track of the movements of the heavens over periods of thousands of years. We met Mr. Brophy near his home in Encinitas, California, to demonstrate his findings. Okay, we're looking at a mock-up of the calendar circle at Nabta Playa. The, the mock-up is to the correct size. It's about 12 feet across. And the, these standing stones are very roughly to the, the size of the stones that were found there. Uh, the real circle, the stones are all a little bit different size, but they're roughly like this. And they're in the positions that we've laid them out here and we've, we've marked the, the circular edge stones with these uh, uh, beach cobblestones. First, the obvious thing are these two gates or windows or sight lines on the edges of the circle. One, I'm standing on the north-south sight line window. I'm standing on the north end, looking south. The other sight line window is the uh, uh, northeast to southwest window. So you got these two windows. And it turns out that that one points very well to the summer solstice sunrise. So on summer solstice, you would see the sunrise. You could see through the uh, gate, if you were actually watching it, or you could stand and watch the uh, shadows, marking it like a, a sun dagger, perhaps, uh, uh, showing the summer solstice sun rising through that gate. And this one you could call a meridian sight line window, the meridian being the north-south line. So what I wanted to determine was what's the meaning of those six standing stones in the center of the circle. And it turns out, since we're thinking astronomically, if you just think of a possible star viewing diagram, there's something that fits really nicely with what those, those stones could mean. At the time that the calendar circle was used, about 6,000 BC, at the day of the year, identified by the, the, the circle being the summer solstice sunrise, the, the summer solstice day, before sunrise, when, when the sky is still dark, if you're standing here looking south on the meridian sight line window, you would have seen in the sky the three stars of Orion's belt in the location with the configuration and the angle 
designated by the star viewing diagram, by those three stones right there. And they match very well. They're at the right angle. They're at the right azimuth in the sky. And it's at the right time, just before summer solstice sunrise. So that's my uh, hypothesis, is that that's what those, those meaning of those three uh, stones is. And so you've got a window of applicability for when the circle applied to uh, uh, the, the meaning of, of those central stones. And that window of applicability is about 6,400 BC to about 4,900 BC. And that window uh, uh, matches very well with the radiocarbon dates that were found uh, for the campfires and things that, in this location. So that's a very, very good match. Now, I wanted to consider what the other three stones were. And they're in a configuration that makes you want to think of Orion's uh, uh, head and shoulders. There aren't that many three sets of three bright stars in a configuration like that in the sky. And there's Orion's shoulder stars, the very bright Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, and uh, the head star Mesa, that, that, that makes you want to think that maybe that's what those are. But if you look on a star chart, or if you look in the sky, you see that when the Orion's belt stars were at this angle, at the correct angle matching the diagram, the shoulder stars of Orion were angled way off. They're angled way the other way, like that. So it doesn't match. That's not what you see, would have seen on, on the meridian. But considering further uh, whether that could be them, the, the second point is that the Orion's belt stars match not only during the radiocarbon date of the calendar circle and during the right time of, of year and the right time of day as designated by the sight line windows, but they're actually at an extremum. They're when the angle of their, their angle on the meridian is at its minimum throughout the whole 25,000 year precession cycle. Okay, so the angle at which you see a constellation in the sky on the meridian changes over the years or due to the precession. And it goes, they go through a whole tilting cycle every 25,000 years roughly. And so the Orion's belt stars match the viewing diagram very perfectly uh, in the window 6400 to 4900 BC when they're at their minimum tilt. So if we look at the in the sky, as you would have seen, the, the shoulder stars of Orion, when the constellation was as its maximum tilt the other way, they would have matched this configuration in the star viewing diagram. So that's a hypothesis, is that's what all six of those central stones mean. The Orion's belt stars at uh, one extremum in the window of time 6400 to 4900 BC, and the shoulder and head star of Orion at the other extremum of the precession tilt uh, around 16,500 BC. You would have gone through a, a similar viewing sequence where you would have seen the shoulder and head star of Orion with that configuration on the meridian at the right place as seen in the, in the diagram and at the right time, this time as marking the winter solstice sunset rather than the summer solstice sunrise. So that's the hypothesis. Now we've got the meaning of all the six center stones uh, of the calendar circle, a uh, uh, good hypothesis for that. And there's other interesting things about this circle. If you plot, overplot the uh, constellation as it is in the sky with the map on, of the stones on the ground, they, the, the feet of Orion, when the head and shoulders match, are on the circle. And the Orion's upstretched uh, uh, a bow arm is also on the circle. And when the belt stars match, you get another set of matching, a roughly the right size, except a bigger, a bigger man figure. So there are many correspondences uh, corroborating that, that this could be the meaning of these six central stones. Now the further co corroboration for the hypothesis that these six stones are the belt and shoulders and head stars of Orion uh, at the times indicated by the rest of the calendar circle comes from the rest of the Nat to Playa site where you have these long baseline megalith alignments. So like we're here north looking south. The calendar circle is actually in a complex of large megalithic stones that are on astronaut, actually stellar aligned, uh, a sequence of stellar aligned uh, megalithic alignments 
south of the calendar circle and you had six lines of megaliths. Three northerly lines and three southerly lines. The distance from the center of those megaliths was roughly around uh, a thousand meters, varying from a few hundred to about 1100 meters. And the calendar circle is essentially in that complex at Nav to Playa. And those uh, long baseline megaliths, it turns out, point to the same six stars at the same time in a repeated way and very specific way that corroborates that this is probably the meaning of, of these, these stars here. Okay, you see the guy with the reflector light down the beach about 800 meters. That demonstrates the distances involved in the long baseline megalith alignments that point to stars right next to uh, the calendar circle at Nabta Playa. Okay, on the beach we demonstrated the distances involved in the megaliths, lines of megaliths near the calendar circle <coughs> at Nabta Playa. And uh, I noted that they point to stars, and the stars they point to are the six, same six stars that are uh, designated in the diagram, the star viewing diagram in the center of the calendar circle. And these six lines, I first looked at them uh, in comparison to the six stars in the star viewing diagram at 6300 BC, just after the start of applicability of the star viewing diagram. And I found that they're rather close. Some of them uh, uh, align at that time, and all six of the lines are, are close. Um, but they're, they're a little bit off. So when I saw that they were close, I, I, uh, I thought, oh, that, that could uh, verify that my, my uh, interpretation of the star viewing diagram of the calendar circle was right, that those are the six stars in, uh, designated. Uh, if only they had all aligned at exactly the same time, I thought they would have proven my case that those six uh, uh, stones in the diagram were, were those stars. Uh, so I thought, oh, too bad. They're not all at exactly the same date. Then I, I looked a little bit closer, though, at uh, what was going on as astronomically, because they were fairly close to the six lines. And uh, I found that they are uh, uh, all around that time close to what's called uh, heliacal rising, vernal equinox heliacal rising. Uh, what, what vernal equinox heliacal rising is, it just means that on the first day of spring, a star rises together over the horizon with the sun. So I found that those six stars were all somewhere, you know, not too far from vernal equinox heliacal rising uh, at that time. So then I looked at, I uh, considered that that might be uh, uh, the, the meaning of the long baseline alignments. So I looked at each one in sequence, its uh, actual date of vernal equinox heliacal rising and found that each one of the six stars designated in the calendar circle diagram align with one of the megalith alignments on its vernal equinox heliacal rising date. So that given, finding out that that is the meaning of those, uh, uh, this megalithic complex with such, uh, with such high likelihood uh, led me to keep uh, uh, studying what else might be meant by the, di the, the megalithic uh, uh, structures. And the next obvious thing to look at is, well, if you look at a diagram of the, of the layout of the megaliths, you first note that, well, there are these very clear lines 
of megaliths, but they aren't all at a uniform or even a uniformly patterned distance from the central radiating hub. They, they appear uh, uh, not very elegantly placed in that regard as far as distance, even though they're very precisely in lines. So the next obvious question is, well, why, why would these uh, designers of the site have, have made these distances kind of unattractive when they were so elegantly uh, placing the alignments and the other aspects? And it occurred to me to look for, for other meaning for the, the distances to go along with the alignment meanings. And the distances from the central hub, I first looked for the possibility that they might uh, represent the brightness of the stars. Um, maybe the brightest star, uh, Betelgeuse, would be the closest one or the farthest one as far as represented by the megaliths. But uh, they weren't. It didn't work out that way. Uh, that didn't seem to be the pattern. And I, I considered some other things. And finally, uh, just for fun, I looked up the actual astrophysical distances to those stars. You can find it on the Hipparchos uh, Satellite Observatory website. They're, they're re very recently measured very accurately. And uh, I was surprised to find that the actual astrophysical distances uh, are represented by the distances on the ground of the stones in, in each line for its star that it represents. And that is a, perhaps the first really astonishing aspect of the Napta Playa Megalis. They match up uh, very well. In fact, our knowledge of uh, some of these six stars' distances, especially the further ones, the Orion's Belt stars, is, is not that good. We have a uh, sizably quoted uh, uh, standard error deviation in the, in, the, in the locations of those. Within the standard error deviation of our knowledge of those, the, the fit is in fact very good. Brophy follows the clues to a greater and greater realization of a profoundly advanced knowledge of our universe from a time when traditional dating shows human civilization had yet to begin. If Brophy's interpretation is correct, it may signal a radical paradigm shift in our understanding of our ancient past. So, the uh, megalithic complex keeps begging analysis. Uh, 